If that boy dares to set foot in the city, if he dares to find success where I have failed, then by the heavens above, I swear he shall not live to see the light of day. Once upon a time in a small village in Africa, there lived a young woman named Adana. She resided in a charming cottage with her children, Michael and his sister Bella. They were a close-knit family, treasuring each other dearly. Adana's life hadn't always been easy. She was a strong and resilient woman who had recently moved to the village from a bustling city after the loss of her late husband, Hugo. Hugo had been a successful businessman, but his sudden passing left the family devastated. Michael, a bright and hopeful boy, had just finished secondary school before his father's untimely death. He dreamed of attending university, pursuing his passions, and making his family proud. However, fate had other plans for him. You see, Michael's uncle, Emeka, harbored deep resentment towards Adana and her family. This resentment stemmed from a tale of love, envy, and betrayal that began long before tragedy struck. Initially, Adana had captured Hugo's heart at first sight, but Emeka, Hugo's brother, had desired Adana long before Hugo did. However, Adana's heart belonged to Hugo, and she rejected Emeka's advances, igniting a jealousy within him. As time passed, Hugo's business flourished, and happiness seemed to surround their home. But Emeka's envy only grew, festering like an unhealed wound. He despised his brother's happiness, success, and most of all, the family he had built. When tragedy struck and Hugo departed this world without warning, Emeka's bitterness reached its peak. Emeka saw an opportunity to claim what he believed was rightfully his, Adana. With malice in his heart and venom on his lips, Emeka threatened Adana, demanding that she marry him or face his fury. But Adana, with the strength of a lioness, refused to yield to his wicked demands. She stood tall, a beacon of courage and resilience in the face of adversity. However, Emeka was not one to be thwarted easily. Fueled by rage and blinded by his desires, he resorted to vicious tactics to torment Adana and her family. He seized the three pieces of land that Hugo had inherited from their father, leaving them with nothing but dust and memories. Even in the face of such adversity, Adana remained steadfast. She worked tirelessly to provide for her family, taking odd jobs around the village and selling goods at the market. Michael, though young, understood the gravity of their circumstances. He helped his mother however he could, fetching water, tending to the garden, and running errands. As days turned into months, the tension between Adana's family and Emeka escalated. Villagers whispered, some sympathized with Adana, while others stayed silent out of fear of Emeka's wrath. Then, one fateful day, a ray of hope pierced through the dark clouds that hung over their home. It was Chima, a friend from the city, a kind-hearted soul with a gentle smile. She paid Adana a visit, extending an offer that would change Michael's life forever. Michael should come stay with my brother in the city, Chema suggested. He can serve him in his shop and learn his trade. It will be a path to a better future for him and your family too. Adana's heart swelled with gratitude at the prospect of a brighter tomorrow for her beloved son. Without hesitation, she agreed, knowing that this opportunity held the key to unlocking their dreams. Michael saw beyond his own desires. He saw the struggles etched upon his mother's face, the sacrifices she had made to keep their family together. In that moment, he made a decision that would alter the course of their destiny. I will go to the city, Mama, he declared, his voice filled with determination. I will serve my master and learn his trade. It may not be the path I envisioned, but it is a step towards a better future for us all. But Emeka, consumed by his envy and rage, he could not bear the thought of Michael finding success beyond his reach. 
If that boy dares to set foot in the city, Emeka seethed, his voice dripping with venom. If he dares to find success where I have failed, then by the heavens above. I swear he shall not live to see the light of day. With those words hanging heavy in the air, Emeka retreated into the darkness of his heart, fueled by a darkness that threatened to swallow him whole. Two days later, Michael boarded a bus bound for the city of Lagos. His heart was full of dreams and hopes for a bright future. He waved goodbye to his family, promising to return home with success shining in his eyes. When Michael arrived in Lagos, he met his master, a kind and gentle man who welcomed him with open arms. His master taught him the ways of their trade, and Michael proved to be a hard-working and diligent apprentice. Everyone in the shop admired Michael's dedication, and they all thought he must be related to his master because of how well they worked together. Meanwhile, back in the village, Emeka's heart burned with jealousy when he learned that Michael had left for the city, and he plotted to cause trouble for his nephew. Emeka delved into dark magic, hoping to stir up trouble between Michael and his master. Adana, Michael's loving mother, felt a heavy weight on her heart. She couldn't shake off the feeling of worry for her son, even though she knew he was chasing his dreams in the city. The next morning, as the sun began to peek over the horizon, Bella rushed to her mother, her eyes wide with fear and concern. She recounted a terrible dream she had experienced during the night, a dream that filled her with dread. In my dream, I saw Michael, Bella began, her voice quivering with emotion. He was surrounded by people in a big market, and they were accusing him of being a thief. Our uncle was among them, shouting for them to burn him to death. Adana's heart sank as she listened to her daughter's words. The thought of her beloved son in danger sent shivers down her spine. She knew they couldn't ignore the warning signs. With determination in her eyes, Adan agreed with Bella's suggestion to involve their parish priest. Together, they sought guidance and strength from their faith, trusting in the power of prayer to shield them from evil. Meanwhile, in the bustling city where Michael served his master, trouble brewed beneath the surface. Some of his fellow apprentices, jealous of his favor with their master, conspired to frame him for theft. They planted their master's money in Michael's bag, hoping to tarnish his reputation and see him punished. Unknown to them, their master had installed cameras throughout his shop and home, watching over his apprentices with a keen eye. When their master confronted them with the evidence, all the apprentices were left speechless. Their guilt was exposed for all to see. Michael, innocent and steadfast in his integrity, stood tall in the face of adversity. His master, recognizing his honesty and loyalty, cleared his name of all wrongdoing. With justice served and his honor restored, Michael continued his work in the shop, his spirits undaunted by the challenges he had faced. Years passed, and Michael continued to serve his master diligently, earning favor for many people in the city. Back in their village, Emeka, who had married a few years earlier, suddenly fell ill with a stroke. He lay incapacitated, fortunate to have a caring wife and a young son by his side. Despite his condition, Emeka had his wife send for Adana, summoning her to his home. Adana was surprised when Emeka's wife arrived at her doorstep, delivering the unexpected message that Emeka wished to speak with her. She made her way to Emeka's house, where he spoke in cryptic words that puzzled Adana. He insisted on the urgency of calling Michael back for a family meeting, claiming he had something important to share with them. Adana agreed to send for Michael to return home for the meeting, as Emeka had requested. Michael arrived in his hometown feeling a mixture of emotions as he walked the familiar paths that led to his childhood home. As he approached the doorstep of his childhood home, he was greeted with overwhelming excitement by Adana, his mother and Bella, his sister. They exchanged warm hugs and shared stories of their past, reminiscing about the good old days. He next morning, Adana and her children, Michael and Bella, 
made their way to Emeka's house for the urgent meeting. As they entered, they were met with a sight they never expected. Emeka, their uncle, was shedding tears, his face contorted with anguish and remorse. The sight of the usually proud and stern Emeka reduced to tears shocked them all to the core. Emeka struggled to compose himself, his tears stifling his words and making it difficult for him to speak. But with trembling lips and a heavy heart, he began to confess. Please, Adana, forgive me for all the wrong I have done to you and your children, he pleaded. I regret all my actions. I called this meeting because I have a confession to make. I killed Ugo, my brother, because he took you away from me. My bitterness consumed me because I saw you first, yet he married you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. With a trembling hand, Emeka handed over the land documents, acknowledging that they rightfully belonged to Adana and her children. Two days after their uncle's confession, Michael returned to the city, his heart heavy with the weight of the truth revealed. Despite the pain and heartache, he held on to the belief that everything happened for a reason, trusting in God's plan. Despite the challenges they had faced in the past, there was no bitterness in Michael's heart. Instead, he extended a hand of kindness to Emeka's widow and son, opening a business for them in the village and ensuring they were cared for. Reflecting on the journey he had traveled, Michael realized the true essence of life. He understood that love and compassion were the greatest treasures one could possess. He embraced the philosophy of being his brother's keeper, extending kindness and support to those in need. As the sun set on their past struggles, Adana and her children found happiness once again in the warmth of Michael's love and the promise of a bright future. Together, they forged a new chapter in their lives, guided by the principles of love, forgiveness, and unity. And so, my dear friends, the story ends here, with Michael and his family standing tall, their hearts overflowing with gratitude and hope. In the tapestry of their lives, they had woven threads of resilience and compassion, proving that even in the face of adversity, love always triumphs in the end.